Hallo und herzlich willkommen, meine Lieben, zu einer neuen Folge von The Suicide of Rachel Forster. Wir befinden uns jetzt hier gerade in diesem Zimmer und äh, ja, wir wissen noch nicht ganz, was es damit auf sich hat, aber wir werden es rausfinden und oh, diese Geräusche immer, ne? Kommen wir mit dir nicht zurecht. Und äh, wir werden rausfinden, was es damit auf sich hat. Hoffe ich. Die Steuerung, ne? So. Dann... So, mal gucken. Ich habe gerade mal eben schön fix einen Screenshot gemacht. Also wir haben hier einen Puzzlewürfel. Den kennen eigentlich viele von euch. Ich habe sowas nie besessen, aber... Buch. <lacht> Rotkäppchen. Schneewittchen, Rapunzel, Jetzt hatten wir schon was hier, Dornröschen, okay, Rachel's Buch, The Speech Ther Therapy Manual, Teach me to talk. Lehr mich zu sprechen. Immer ein paar Notenblätter. Eine Tafel zum Lernen. Dann haben wir hier ein gemaltes Bücherregal. Ein gemaltes Fenster. Schlüssel. Erstmal gucken wir uns das hier an. Zahnspangendose. You get out of there. You know by any chance if Rachel wore a retainer? Uh, maybe. Uh, there was an article saying they hadn't found it at the site of the suicide. I remember. She always made a horrible noise when she clipped it onto her palate with her tongue. What does Rachel's retainer have to do with anything? I found a box. It could be hers. Why should someone keep a ten-year-old retainer? Maybe they're not just keeping it. Maybe they're using it. The box is empty. No way. I, I can't. Let me go on. Okay, die Zahnspangdose. Also von dem Hauptbild von dem Spiel. Die Zahnspange quasi. Ein kleiner Schlüssel. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. We have to call someone. You have to get out of there right now. No. I found a key. It's from my old music box. The one in Leonard's room. I'm having a hard time following. If everything in here is Rachel's, then why is my music box's key here? I don't know and I don't want to know. Tell you what I think? Someone could have been in your room. It doesn't matter. How can you be so calm? If someone was in there, he's not here now. I need to grab the chance to figure out what the hell is going on, or went on, here. Hoffentlich ist auch keiner mehr da. Teddy Bear. Yes. Nicole, listen. I already know what you're going to say, but please trust me. Get out of there. No way. You do realize you found the replica of a dead girl's bedroom. This is sick. This is a... a the a... more things get freaky, bizarre, and painful, the more I need to figure out why. Why all of this... We'll figure it out. With Sheriff. Once you're out of there, into a safe hotel room in town. Please, just... Listen. A bunch of strange things happened since I got here. Think about it. Phone calls on a deadline. Old lipsticks that don't go bad. 
Leonard's notes where he says he saw a girl that's supposedly been dead for ten years, and now this! All good reasons to get out of there. We both agree that saving your skin is top priority, right? I've looked over every inch of this place, and there's no one. If it's true, you realize what that means. What? What are you trying to tell me? Your father... He spent years in there, in total solitude. With the weight of his family and Rachel in his conscience, he, he wasn't the kind of guy to just let the past slide with a shrug. You know that too. I can't believe you said something like that. Think about it. That room could be an act of love. Distorted even more, but in his eyes... How dare you! My... My father might have had a lot of weaknesses, but surely what you're saying... Leave out that he cheated on my mom. Leave out that he fell in love with a 16-year-old, but f fucking hell, don't you dare even think that! I... He would never have built a fucking underground shrine for a dead person. Your father had changed in the end. You didn't spend time with him, but I met him, and I'm telling you. No! I don't give a shit about what you have to say. I just want you to know that... If you don't want to help discover the truth, don't call me. Die Entscheidung, die musste ich jetzt aber schnell treffen. Ich konnte sie nicht so schnell treffen. Hier haben wir noch ein Coconut-Buch. Ein Fernglas, noch ein, bemalt, noch ein, angemalt, also ein aufgemaltes Fenster, ein aufgemaltes Klavier oder eine Orgel oder so. Tja, was haben wir jetzt? Der Schlüssel, den ich gefunden habe, gehört zur Spieluhr in Lennarts Zimmer. Ich werde sie öffnen. Öffnen, öffnen, öffnen. Bitte nicht selber noch verrückt werden, junge Dame. Das wäre sehr schön. Asshole. How dare you? You don't know shit. You don't know fuck. Finally, a bit of peace and quiet. It'll help me clear my head without those incessant phone calls. I'm not a fucking switchboard, for fuck's sake. Okay, let me piece things together. I just found out there's a room dedicated to Rachel Foster in my father's hotel. Maybe with items from her real room. Holy Jesus, that's freaky. Some people think she didn't commit suicide, and some even think she's still alive. Maybe if I think through my steps, I can work something out. First thing, the phone call. They said Rachel isn't dead. Then, the lipstick from ten years ago turns up, still good. And then, my father's various notes where he says he still sees her. If that were true, it might explain the sighting by her friend here in the Timberline. And now I find her retainer box, but no retainer. That room might not be a reconstruction. If Rachel didn't kill herself, Rachel could have lived here. But if she's still alive, why doesn't she tell her parents? Unless they're all in cahoots. No suicide, no timberline money. No, 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 I'm just being paranoid. And then, There'd be no reason for her to live in a fucking underground replica of her room. My key in the middle of Rachel's stuff. Is it a message? Where do I fit in? Are you trying to tell me something, Dad? My music box with the hockey player. I don't think I have the guts to hear that tune again. But I must. schon so ekelhafte Geräusche gehabt. Z. 
So, dann nehmen wir mal die Spieluhr in Beschlag. Hier ist nichts Neues zugekommen. Die Spieluhr. The 27th of December 1983. The hockey finals at Missoula. Us against Cold Springs High. We won by sudden death after a three-hour game, and I got the medal for the most number of face-offs won. According to the papers, that was the night Rachel killed herself. Coming home, Mom barely had the time to pull into the garage, that I was already racing up to you, waving the medal in your face, Daddy. I was so happy. But you had other things on your mind, right? And you and Mom started fighting. The voices getting louder. That long silence when she comes down the stairs with the suitcases and Mrs. Bryce tries to stop her. Mom's car stays here and we leave with my Uncle John's. I never found out what started that fight. Mom never wanted to talk about it. Are you trying to, Daddy? Hmm. Tag 9. So langsam aber sicher setzt sich das Puzzle, glaube ich, zusammen. Habe ich so das Gefühl. Aber es ist heute so mega gruselig. Ach ja. Versiegelte Tür. Melden. Irving. Finally. I'm okay. I was dying on this chair. Let's keep going, if you want. Together. So, I looked around the entire hotel, and if there's still a chance of getting to the bottom of this story, then it's gotta be behind the locked door on the last floor, in the attic. That wing has been condemned for years. I know, I'll be careful. Okay. There are too many things that I took for granted. It's as if someone was putting pieces of my past in front of me to show them to me under another light. Who are you talking about, Nikki? Maybe it's my father. In my music box, I found the medal I won the night Rachel died. Dad could have put it there, and if he did, there must be a reason. It all sounds insane. The night Rachel died. Maybe I have to start from there. I played in that really long hockey game. But what was going on in the meantime? You remember that night, Irving? I think I was at church with my family. Church? That night we had a mass for the poor here. We held one every year. As usual, Mom volunteered to take me to the game, but she was so busy with the soup kitchen that I was afraid she was going to be late. I remember while she ran around, she said she ordered me to close the mezzanine. You mean the intermediate floor above the reception? What's in there? A storeroom. Have you been up there? No, I'd forgotten all about it. I'd better take a look before moving on. Warum, warum hat er dann jetzt bitte nicht auf irgendwas geantwortet? Er hat nie eine Antwort gehabt, wenn wir irgendwas gesagt haben. Ich sollte einen Blick ins äh, Mezzanine werfen. In der Mitte finden die Dinge ihre richtige Position. Das ist, glaube ich, äh, hier gewesen. Main Floor. Da. Okay. Auf geht's.
Was? Lagerraum oder kommt jetzt das große Kabinett? Schläger. Guten Tag. Hm. Nett, dass sie alle hier sind. Äh. Irving? Hallo? Can you hear me? I'm on the mezzanine, and it's a nightmare. There are mannequins everywhere. They're set up like in a scene. There's one with a hockey stick. Wait, what the fuck? It's my stick! If you're listening to me, whoever set up this representation, I, I think they want to tell me that Rachel was killed? Why my hockey stick? Hello? Hello? Oh God, why isn't he answering? Irving, I swear I'm not kidding. This is a huge deal. If you can hear me, it's time to make that phone call. Ich würde mal behaupten... Äh... Waren das gerade Schritte über uns? Ich weiß nicht, ich weiß nicht. Also, ist ja nicht so, dass der Irving jetzt immer so unheimlich vertrauensvoll äh, war. Ah, unser Schläger. Unser Name drauf. Okay. Where are you, Nicole? It's about time. Why didn't you answer? How many doors have you opened, Nicole? How many are still missing? What doors are you talking about? Keep going. Hello? Hello, Irving. standen aber noch nicht immer da. Ja, es waren gerade Schritte. Mhm. Tja. Ich würde mal sagen, der Irving war von Anfang an sehr unsympathisch. Er wusste alles. Und, äh, Hat auch so nicht viel gesagt. Ne? Wurde immer komischer. Irving, was tust du? Was verbirgt sich hinter der verschlossenen Tür im zweiten Stock? Ich würde sagen, es ist time to... Zeit hochzugehen. Ja. Schön. Hm. Ja, unser Irving entpuppt sich gerade so ein bisschen als Psycho. Aha. Aha. Schau mal an. Schau mal einer an. Die Tür ist wieder durch Zauberhand offen.
Sieht so aus wie so ein kleines Lager, wo unser Irving sich aufgehalten hat. Frequenz für unser Telefon. Das wird funktionieren, steht dort. Ein Platz zum Heizen, ein Platz zum Schlafen. Wir haben hier... Recherchen über uns. Urkunden von uns, von der University, von der High School. Town Girl. Ah ja, vom Hockey spielen. Hm. Ordentliche Informationen hat er gesammelt. Was hier? Welche Recherchen noch? Hier haben wir was. Keine Ahnung, unser Auto in der Garage. Nett. Ghost Sightings. Komische Lichter. außerhalb des Ballraums. Window. Also Fenster. Äh, Ballraumfensters. 1984. Wir sehen 1987. Reiseraum. Hotel. Helena Forest. Also Helena Wald. Ähm, Platz unbekannt. Christmas 1980. Weihnachten 1980. Da haben wir noch ein Mixtape. Klinky Christmas. Das sind die Geräusche, die wir gehört haben. Dieses Kling Klingen. Hier hat er noch mehr Kassetten. Noch mehr Recherche. Das Wetter für diese Umgebung hat er auch recherchiert, damit wir auch schön hier in diesem Sturmfest sitzen. Das war alles geplant. Keine Ahnung, was das ist. Auto Engine Energie oder unsere ähm, unser Automodell und so. So, wir konnten hier was melden. Hallo? I imagine you found my room. What? What does all this mean? That's a question I've asked myself many times. What does all this mean, Irving? How far do you want to push yourself? How much can you take? What? Every memory. Painstakingly gathered, every reconstructed piece, every little element retrieved from the dark. A photo, a hairband, a lipstick. It means remembering, Rachel. That's what all this means. I didn't choose this path. I had to do it. You realize you're talking like you're crazy. These walls ooze with memories. The memories get into the walls. Under the floorboards, they 
creep into the crawl spaces. You're not with FEMA. You, Jenkins, you, you never talked to him. Your boss, the phone call, all those weird events. You were behind all of them. Someone had to bring the last piece of the memory puzzle here. The most important one. You. Me? I... I... Your father wanted to keep you out of it. I convinced him that only you could resolve the equation, as he called it. I... don't understand. How could you? Over the last few days, you got a little taste of what it means to dig around in the past. Hunting for memories that scratch away behind every wall in the night. I... We did it for years. Day after day after day. All lies. I have nothing against lies. I grew up around lies. But now it's time for the truth to come out. Finally. What do you want to do now? I want to tell you a story. There was an invisible boy. Like everyone, he just wanted to run on the grass, ride a bike, swim in the lake in summer. But his father... Oh, his father had other plans for his soul. In his dark world made of silence and prayer, there shone only one star. His wonderful sister. A heavenly creature that spent hours telling him fairy tales in secret. She who told him what a free and strong man he would become one day. Rachel? She was like that. Free and strong. At the time, I didn't understand her dyslexia. Or what retard meant. That's what they called her at school. But I could hear her cry at night. I wanted to protect her. But I couldn't. One day, that beautiful, luminous creature met someone. A human being that saw her for real. My dad. Yes. And I was the invisible witness of what happened. A love. Simply a love. Nothing more, nothing less. But that love was too much. And it would be punished. Who paid for this love, Nicole? Rachel. Rachel was... your sister. Now I remember you. You were too caught up with your hatred for Rachel to notice the innocent little kid that sometimes tagged along. I didn't hate your sister. I was just jealous. Doesn't matter. Those days are over. How could I have forgotten you? I was raised to be forgotten. Irving? Where are you right now? The day my sister paid with her life for her love, we all died. We make up the history of the Timberline. It was a tragedy. But you... We all got frozen there. In that very moment, in that confined horizon of events, as you'll understand, as you've already begun to understand. I want to know what you want from me. You have to keep going. To get to where I wasn't able to go. You will be the new witness. You owe it to us. And you owe it to her.
ist ja nett. Was hat er hier? Die Eiskammer, Gefrierkammer, das äh, Abstellräumchen, wo wir gerade noch zuvor waren. Und hier ist noch der Raum, wo wir waren, unten im... wo ihr Zimmer nachgebildet war wahrscheinlich. Ja, harter Tobak. Und ich würde sagen, wir machen genau hier weiter beim nächsten Mal. Was dann noch so auf uns zukommen mag. Ich glaube, es geht so langsam dem Ende zu. Und äh, wir lassen uns überraschen, wer was wie da mit drin hängt. Und vor allen Dingen, wer hat es getan oder wie ist es passiert? Was ist mit welcher wirklich passiert? Wir werden es, glaube ich, in der nächsten Folge erfahren. Vielen, vielen Dank fürs Zusehen, ihr Lieben. Macht's gut und ich sage bis zum nächsten Mal. Haut rein. Mm-hmm.